it's fine. Hello, everybody out there in Facebook land. Uh, we're live here today with uh, Heather and Matt McClung. They're at Hale's Ale Brewery in Seattle. For those of you who don't know Matt and Heather, they for a long time owned a brewery called Schooner Exact Brewing in Seattle. And uh, that's a long story. But now you are at Hales, and looks like you are in your business office or the brewer's office at Hales. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, we're down downstairs next to the brewery. So, um, like I said, you guys are most people in the in the, the local beer scene associate you guys with with uh, with Schooner Exact Brewing, and it's probably unusual for people to hear that you are at hails at all and matt i understand this is going to be your first batch brewing there is that correct yeah we're in the middle of it today okay so you're in the middle of brewing a batch of beer right now and heather you've been working with hails for quite some time how long yeah um it'll almost be two years two years yeah my, my god how time flies <laughs> i thought you were gonna say like eight months or something <laughs> No. No. Yeah. So, uh, what is what is your role at Hales, Heather? Let's start with Heather. What are you What are you doing for Hales? Yeah. So Mike is seventy six, and he just wants to move on towards retirement. And so he asked me to come on board and uh, help him out and get operations kind of cleaned up. <laughs> And give him a chance to retire. <laughs> he certainly deserves it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's basically. I mean, I don't want to to just to give away my age. You know, Hales opened in eighty three. They opened. You know, they opened like one month after I graduated from high school. <laughs> nice. uh, so it's easy for me to mark time by the age of Hales Brewing. And Matt, you're just you're just working there as you're just brewing, or you they no, got you in a, uh, a fancier role than that, or what? Maybe a little fancier, but uh, running production and uh, kind of working on the facility as well. So doing a lot of improvements around the brewery. This this brewery is 25 years old at this location, so there's a lot of equipment that uh, needs some repair. Things need to be updated um, to the you know, kind of more more current beer styles. Um, yeah, cleaning things up, kind of developing some new procedures, um, and kind of like Heather is tightening up the company. We're tightening up production. Right on. So, so been, what are you brewing today? We're brewing a citra based IPA that. Um, going to be kind of maybe kind of postmodern and delicious postmodern uh, no does, does that does that mean hazy no not not hazy we're, we're not that postmodern. but thank um, you yeah. <laughs> i'm tired i'm tired of hazy <laughs> ipas to tell you the truth i run into yeah. too many hazy so, ipas that are too hazy and not enough ipa yeah right. yeah i don't like Everyone drinking beer out of a i don't like drinking beer out of a juice box Right. So, the working name for this beer is Hop Rising, and it'll have imagery of a hop rising from the ashes, kind of signifying Hale's next adventure. So, so <laughs> talking about Hale's and uh, what, where do you see? I mean, as Mike works towards retirement, like we said, and he certainly deserves it, and he's he's been the one, you know, captaining that ship for a long time. Where do you see Hales going in the near future? Where where are you planning on driving that boat? Do you well, know? <laughs> I think that you know, with any sort of legacy brand, it's a really important balance between keeping like the original spark that made hail unique while still um, updating the things that need updating. Yeah, being relevant. And yeah, well, being that's that this is an interesting time for legacy brewers. Um, 
right. a year a year ago, legacy breweries were it was looking like they're in trouble. But right now, with the way the world is, um, legacy breweries are kind of providing people with a sort of comfort, something you know they can they can rely on. You know, to me, like right now, uh, a Hale's Pale Ale would American Pale Ale would taste like you know familiar and comfortable. You know. And I think a lot of people are, you know, that's like when man when they put Manny's in a can, it was like all these people just freaked out because it was like the best thing ever because it, it just provided them with something that they were familiar with and comfortable comfortable with. And I think right now legacy brands are, I don't want to say benef nobody's benefiting from this situation, but I think legacy brands are, are seeing a little bit of uh, people's hearts are warming back up to legacy brands. And you know, the truth matters, there's nothing wrong with a brewery being 35 years old um, if it's still relevant and they're still making interesting, good beer. So it sounds like that's where you guys want to take this thing. Yeah, definitely. And we have um, a whole new sales staff and sales manager. And so you'll start to see um, more hails variety out in the market, whereas our old... Um, crew really pushed the super goose in the bulk where yeah. we were making some really interesting beers uh, even a year ago, but you just didn't ever see them in the marketplace. So now we'll, we'll still have the old favorites and some new exciting beers. And beers. That's great. Um, so yeah. do you, are you guys on a, do you have a, what kind of advice are you on? Can you take us out into the brew house or anything? Are you on a on you on a laptop yeah, or? We're on we're on Heather's phone. Okay. Is charged up. They're okay, so you, 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 yeah, as long as you, as long as you've got a Wi-Fi connection, why don't you just take us out into the brew house and show you what show us what you got going on right now? All right, so let's see here. Um, well, since we're in the office, let me let me do this real quick. Um, one of the things that had started prior to me coming on board with Chris was Chris had a, uh, or made a connection with a, with a company called Invisible Sentinel. And they provide equipment and a testing platform for looking at uh, beer spoilage organisms. Um, they use uh, PCR technology. Um, so let me see the phone here. Everything's kind of rotating around the wrong direction. But um, they use uh, some kind of high-end uh, microbiology to uh, allow brewers to test beer immediately. We don't have to send cans out. You can test for lactobacillus, pediococcus, mm -hmm. um, saccharomyces, diastaticus, and different, different critters that we don't want in our beer. So we've started that, and we've got some kind of cool equipment down here that you can see. We've got a a centrifuge here on the right, and then a thermocycler here on the left. It tests it's above, so we can get results back on on our brews that we're testing within three hours. So, you know, before we dry hop something, or uh, before we pitch a new yeast, we can test these for for cleanliness. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, in the past, um, there's been you know some problems with contamination most breweries experience it from time to time consistency here with the open fermenters uh, was a problem but um, this allows us to actually look inside the beer from a microbiological standpoint which is it's good to go all right but hopefully i don't kind of a fun you. fun little i don't know, group of instruments for us to work with um so brew house is out here. Let's see if we can see it. Kevin's up there right now uh, working on the beer. Their kettle, mash tuns up above. Whirlpool's down here. Let's see, there we go. Uh, so one of the great things here about this brew house that makes it so unique is it's a, a gravity-driven system. So mash tuns mm -hmm. up high. Metal. So all of our runoff from the metal tun just flows by gravity from the boil kettle down to the whirlpool here that you can see is all gravity. So the brew house that I was used to was all pump driven and we had a burger panel and it was, 
you know, flow meter is pretty simple. It's kind of cool. But this is this is a really neat system, um, and it's pretty big. Thirty barrel brew house. That's the largest brew house I've ever worked with. And you're making a full thirty barrel batch today. Yeah, we're actually going to do two turns, so we're going to knock out sixty. Oh, right on. So, um, what's the availability of this beer going to be like? Is it going to be packaged? Uh, two weeks, yeah. We uh, should have a label coming out for it. So, label is in the works. Um, and, it's, yeah, package and draft. It's going to be bottled then, huh? No, it'll actually be canned. So it's going to be one canned, of okay. Going on is we, we have um, a labeler that was originally for glass. Heather worked with Rich Mark's label up on Capitol Hill, and we have a label that actually applies to cans really well. So we're moving toward all the cans so yeah. that we can offer more variety in the market. That's great. As opposed to buying truckloads of printed cans. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is there anything else you guys got going on there at the brewery that we should know about? Uh, got any other ideas so for future some, beers? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, actually, this is kind of cool uh, back here. So I'm actually in the, the fermentation room. And for people that have been to Hales mm -hmm. uh, in the past, one of the you know, cool things that uh, Hales always offered a view of was the open fermenters. Um, so camera's kind of small. You can see the windows out there by the pub. Um, we still have the seven fermenters that we're using a little bit in here. Um, we uh, just sent red menace into can yesterday and uh, had real low dissolved oxygen, you know, produced, you know, from a beer that was produced in the fermenters. So that was kind of nice to have that success. Um, we have also these. We have these little seven barrel barrels. They're called the sisters. Um, the crew named them originally Helga, Helga and Heidi. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> so we took the red menace, red menace recipe and um, put it on some lager yeast uh, to, to see how it comes out. So the red menace has a really nice. Um, malt bill that I think would transition into the Vienna lager style with the regular yeast. So we have the ability to do that. Um, we have some hazy yeast going right now in a little refrigerated candy right there. We're going to give it a little dose of work to it. Um, we have some fun stuff there. Um, another item that's pretty cool that um, you know I've never had at Schooner uh, you'll see here is our centrifuge. So, Mike bought a centrifuge a long time ago. I don't mm -hmm. know, eight years ago or so. So, one of the first breweries to really use it, you know, in this area regularly. Yeah. Um, so, a, a fantastic tool for, for beer clarity. Um, I'm not used to that sort of, you know? have a centrifuge and then a canning line in-house, you know, to label our own cans. We can come up with, you know, one-off beers, draft them in cans, um, get them out the bottle shops, uh, you know, out into the market, get the regularity. So. I want to go um, some nice for a second. I want, to, I want to jump in and tell you that uh, we have some hellos and comments and stuff coming on Facebook. Uh, Chris Miller says hey kids um also we've got uh who do we else got saying uh oh joe labat hi joe oh. um oh, he says hello as does uh who else said hello to you gary wood oh gary <laughs> so yeah you got some old friends paying attention right now oh um, that's fantastic so yeah, if they're it, out there listening. Hello to y'all. It's um, it's good to be back. It's been a while. 
Yeah, we've 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 missed seeing you guys. Uh, I mean, I've known that Heather was working behind the scenes in the beer thing for the last few years. You know, since since you know you guys kind of disappeared off the scene. I know I know that Heather didn't completely different disappear, but Matt, you decided you wanted to build houses or something crazy like that for a while, which yeah. always seemed like a perfectly a perfect waste of a, a perfectly good brewer. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it was good. It was nice having a break and you know getting to go out and do something. I accomplished one of my bucket list items, which was building a house from the ground up. Um, so got to do that. And then Heather got hired by my wife. So, Perfect. Um, yeah. So we're back to um, you know, talking beer during the game, talking beer at night. Uh, <laughs> Getting the band back together. Yeah. <laughs> so um, now Pam, Pam, Pam Brulat just chimed in and said hello. Hi, Pam. Um, yeah. <laughs> So it's great to see you guys both back involved in the industry in a more visible manner. Um, you guys were, when you started Schooner Exact, you were the first uh, first nano brewery I'd ever encountered. <laughs> Starting in your active space in West Seattle, somebody, a friend, a mutual friend told me about these people who are opening a brewery in an active space in or in their garage or whatever it was at the very beginning. And I was like, that's not possible. You can't do that. And it's like, well... Hey. You did it. And look yeah. at you now. Look yeah. at you now. Look how far you've come. <laughs> yeah. It's been a hell of a ride, yeah, hasn't it? It's, been a ride. It's, it's it's fantastic to be back in. And uh, you know, back when we had Schooner, I never imagined myself um, you know, working at another brewery. I used to joke around with, with like Bo and Black Raven and if we ever were out of Schooner, you know, come work for him. But um you know, working here for Mike, uh, it's been amazing uh, over the last few months, getting to know him better, working side by side with him on improvements here. Uh, you know, working for a brand, uh, working for a brewery that, you know, when I was teaching, I used to come down here with my buddy Jamie and get burgers and a beer all the time. Mm -hmm. so this was one of our haunts. And, uh, it's pretty neat, being, pretty neat being here, being part of it. And, Hopefully, getting to carry on the, the the legacy and take tales into the next note. Well, that's great. Um, I look forward to being able to share a beer with you guys sometime in the future. Though we can't make any promises about when that will be. <laughs> um, yeah. But we can all we can all hope for the best, and we can all. Uh, Imagine the days when we'll be able to sit around and bullshit with each other and swap yeah. beers and take taste sample tastes of each other's beers and do all that fun stuff that we like to do. In the meantime, yeah. uh, is there anything else you guys anything else you guys want to talk about about what's going on yeah. with Hales? So there was um, a rumor a while ago about Hales selling, and so. Obviously, that has not occurred. It's still just independently run, and same uh, shareholders are still involved. And um, yeah, we also look forward to this next year because we just um, received some work from the liquor board that the uh, El Camion and our situation needs to be revised. And so that means that we'll likely have to restaurant operations in house within the next calendar year. And so anyone who is a fan of Winter Exact Food is going to find a new place to go for their pub there. Oh, right on. That's yeah. cool. So, so exactly, yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but you'll have to fill me in, fill me in later when we've got a, or we'll do it over email or something. Um, yeah. Give me some more details about that. It's a little bit rough. We've got a little bit of a rough connection today, but uh, oh, wow. we're we're kind of get, we're kind of getting about three out of every four words. So oh. is it going to be better yeah. when you get back in the office? I think so. So run by run that bias again. What you said, something changed with the liquor control board. Yeah, the liquor control board is. Um, 
had a new and fortunate agent and he said that our current operations with El Camion uh, right. needs to be changed. And so uh, within the next year, we'll likely have to bring restaurant operations in house, which means that we'll be able to control the whole customer experience from beginning to end. And um, none of my food theory has changed. So people that enjoy Spooner Zach food are gonna be able to find a new place to go. Awesome. So yeah, for people who don't know, um, some time ago, Hales just basically decided to stop operating its own kitchen and El Camion, who some people might recognize as being a big food truck operator around town, came in and set up a kitchen, set up the kitchen and was serving their food from your kitchen. Correct. And now the liquor control board has said there's an issue with that. And it sounds like you guys are going to get back into the business of making your own food. Yeah. Within the That's next exciting. calendar year. Yeah. I missed that. What was it? The McClung burger? The McClung style burger <laughs> that I used to always get. <laughs> yeah. Is that going to be on yeah, the menu? Uh, Maybe. Yeah, possibly. We've been, uh, so uh, for those of you who remember our first chef, Warren, uh, mm -hmm. and, um, we were chatting with him back at the end of the year. Actually, he and his, his kids were for Christmas hung out with us for a while. We've been talking with Warren pretty regularly. He's down in San Diego now. But, um, he might be, might be resurfacing up here for a, a period of time at some point. Yeah. Well, so that'd be awesome. Those, Wouldn't it be? Yeah. yeah. For the uh, people that loved El Camion, there will also um, have a real passion for mixed demolized corn. So we're going to definitely be doing some tortilla curry house as well so people oh. still get to have some mexican food in addition to the normal uh pub fare so. right on well that's great um this is that's exciting stuff now we just got to get over the a couple of hurdles here and get Thank the you. world back open and operating like normal again and uh this is going to be fun to watch what you guys do down there and it's going to be really fun to get to drink your beer again matt <laughs> yeah thank you and and I look forward. I look forward to seeing what you guys do with uh, the Hales brand and just kind of the the whole Hales. You know, you're you're. It's a, it's got to be a little bit intimidating to, you know, to to take on something that's got the, you know, the, in all of the best ways the legacy that Hales does. You know, I mean, dude was an absolute pioneer, one of the founding fathers of this entire industry. You know, at a time when there was nothing. Hales popped up out in the middle of nowhere in Eastern Washington. It's a pretty remarkable yeah. story. Um, but yeah, so unless you guys have anything else to, to talk about, you know, um, we can wrap this up. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, no, we just, we appreciate you Kendall and, um, having us on today. It's, it's great seeing you and chatting with you and it's great being back in the business. Um, uh, when I came back in and, uh, got my brew boots back out. Still have my my most recent pair of boots that I had at school. Um, it just feels right. The boots feel good. Being around the ingredients feels good. The equipment is fantastic. The people are fantastic. It's, it's good to be back. Awesome. I look forward to drinking some of that Citra IPA in a couple of weeks. Yeah. If you uh, if you can make it down here, we can maintain six feet. And, Taste it out of the tank. Either that or, you know, you drive right past my house on your way home every day. Just remember that. Right. <laughs> right. That's right. So we'll be we'll be talking we'll be talking soon one way or the other. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, sounds good, Kendall. Thank okay, you. Well, great. It was... Other people that are chiming in on Facebook, give them our best. Absolutely. And thanks again for joining me and we'll talk soon. And thanks for joining us, everybody on Facebook. And uh, we're signing off now. So thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye.